to know about fallout, what it is, and what to do to protect yourself against it. Everybody needs to know. Yes, this does mean you. Watch and listen. One day, these facts may save your life. If you recognize that little dude, you've probably played Fallout, a game set in a post-apocalyptic world forever frozen in a futuristic 1950s. Before the nuclear war that caused that apocalypse, a company called vault Tech created a series of Fallout shelters called Vaults that could support around a thousand people for around a thousand years. The game draws heavy inspiration from the height of the Cold War, the period in time in which that video was made. A time in which people were actually investing in bomb shelters in fear of a nuclear holocaust. Everyone can survive fallout if they take a few simple precautions to protect themselves. And to talk about those fallout shelters, I'm going to need some help from my friend Sam over at This Exists. Some people think that all you can do inside of a fallout shelter is simply survive. And I'm here to tell you that is not true. You can dance the night away inside Shanghai's The Shelter, or if you go to Russia's Bunker 42, you can enjoy a lovely meal and a Cold War museum. People live inside of missile silos, but more importantly, people make LSD inside of missile silos. So head on over to my channel, This Exists, to learn more about that fun, repurposed shelter business. And now here's Dylan with serious stuff. While it was more common during the Cold War, people are still building fallout shelters today. And if you wanted, you could buy one, a really nice one. Meet Robert Vicino of vault -Tac. I mean, Vivos, a company that advertises super high luxury fallout shelters for super rich people. Unlike the Cold War, when a nuclear holocaust was at least in the realm of possibility, Vecino believes that the end of the world is coming due to the now past end of the buying calendar, predictions in the Bible, and the fact that earthquakes happen. Besides 2012, what's happening in Iran, what's happening in our economy, social anarchy, economic anarchy, um, possibility of Yellowstone going, oh, the recent earthquakes we've seen. The only supposedly completed shelter is in Indiana, which was upconverted from an old Cold War era bunker, which itself was upconverted from an old limestone mine. It can support up to 80 people at $35,000 a seat. It has a five-star luxury finish, and it can support those people for over a year at 150 feet or 45 meters deep. Vecino is now working on the Europa One, which would be a much larger facility under Rothenstein, Germany. Again, not converting an old Cold War era bunker, this time auctioned off by the German government. But this one is going to be much larger than Indiana, with the potential of supporting 6,000 people. The facility itself is huge, containing 21,000 square meters or 227,000 square feet of blast-proof livable space, made up of 5 kilometers or 3 miles of unbroken tunnels. The facility will also be a five-star experience with planned pools, pubs, gyms, and theaters, presumably so you can laugh at live streams of poor people dying outside. And then there's the Vivos Quantum, a planned pod-based shelter that can be scalable to any size, similar to the underwater city of Atlantica that we talked about a couple weeks ago. If you haven't seen that episode, you should click here to go check it out when you're done watching this video. You'll like it, I promise. All of these shelters are said to be able to withstand nuclear attacks, chemical attacks, EMPs, tsunamis, earthquakes, zombie uprisings, you know, the huge. If you can't afford or meet up to the strict standards of Vivos, you could survive the apocalypse in an Atlas bunker, which will apparently ship and install around the world. And failing that, you could survive the apocalypse by being a member of the British royal family. Under the small English town of Corsham in Wiltshire lies a city, a fallout city. During the height of the Cold War, the British government built the facility as a secession plan in the event of a nuclear or any other catastrophic attack. The bunker was meant to hold 4,000 government officials, as well as some members of the royal family. Like the vaults in Fallout, the bunker, called Burlington, was designed to be fully self-sufficient, but for significantly less time. Three months instead of a thousand years. No big. Burlington contains 96 kilometers or 60 miles of roads, is 100 feet or 30 meters deep, has a TV studio, hospitals, cafeterias, not to mention some sweet murals. With a skeleton crew of four, the bunker was somewhat operational until 2004. Though it wouldn't have done much good because by the 1980s, the time between nuclear warning and nuclear strike was four minutes, and Corsham is a good two hour drive from Parliament Hill. But the British weren't alone. Around the same time, America built their own nuclear holocaust-proof bunker in the most American way possible, under a luxury hotel. This one I'm surprised wasn't in Fallout 3. Called Project Greek Island, the bunker was located under the Greenbrier Hotel in West Virginia. And it was meant to house the entire United States Senate and House of Representatives in the event of an emergency. 
It could house 1,100 people for up to 40 days and it managed to stay a secret for 30 years. Which is a pretty impressive feat given the fact that they installed a 7,000 foot landing strip nearby in a town of just 3,000 people. But you're probably not a member of the British royal family, or Congress, or probably even the 1%, so how can you survive the apparent impending apocalypse? Lucky for you, Vegas has got you covered. In the 1980s, Las Vegas installed a series of flood channels meant to protect the city from, well, flooding. Since then, the tunnels have been providing refuge to the homeless, with around a thousand people currently living in them, and in pretty decent condition. I mean, for a tunnel. While not being super deep, these tunnels are made of thick concrete that would provide some level of protection in an emergency. But if you want real good tunnel survival, you'll have to head to Moscow. Their metro system is incredibly deep, the deepest section being 74 meters or 243 feet underground. And it's recognized as one of the best places to survive a nuclear holocaust, so much so that it inspired the aforementioned events in the book's now video games Metro 2033. Here in Toronto, Canada, we're home to the largest underground shopping complex in the world, called The Path. It's comprised of a series of tunnels, or paths, totaling 370,000 square meters or 4 million square feet of retail space. Though having spent much time commuting through The Path, I can't imagine wanting to live there, even during the apocalypse. I find it interesting that most of our so-called modern survival shelters are simply repurposed Cold War shelters, but the concept of survival bunkers isn't an entirely modern idea. During the Byzantine era, the Cappadocians had an excellent strategy when under threat of invasion or zombie uprising. Hide in their massive underground cities, seal the door with giant rocks, grab a pint, and wait for the whole thing to blow over. The Cappadocia region in Turkey is rich with soft, easy to carve volcanic ash rock, which led them creating massive underground cities. And the most famous is probably Derinkuyu. It can hold as many as 20,000 people, and it did so as recently as 1923. The cities were self-sustaining with many water tunnels, air shafts, and chambers for livestock. Recently in the Cappadocia region, a 5,000 year old underground city was discovered that would dwarf even Derinkuyu. With tunnels covering more than 5 million square feet or half a million square meters and reaching depths of 113 meters or 371 feet. Which is deeper than Moscow's metro, the UK's Fallout City, Vivios's fancy vault for rich people, and probably deeper than the vaults in Fallout. What do you guys think? Are you pumped for Fallout 4? And would you buy a super high class Fallout shelter if you could afford one? Or is this all just terrible for society? Let me know in the comments and be sure to go check out Sam's video on This Exists, which is all about recycled Fallout shelters. It's awesome, his channel rocks. You should subscribe and leave a comment that I sent you over there so I can boost up my ego even more than it's currently being boosted to. And if you're done with that and want to do more cool stuff, you can go check out my Patreon campaign and join all the cool people who get to hang out with me on Google Plus and play video games with me and whatever other perks that I have that I forget at the moment. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to click right on my face to subscribe or at least think about it. War. War never changes. <clears throat> War. War never changes. It's my best Ron Perlin, guys. It's Ron Perlin, right?